Hello and welcome to episode 22 of the Rewriting the Past save here on TW 2020. We are of course still in charge of WCW in the year 1998 and don't worry folks there will be no broadcasting shenanigans in this episode. I'm actually going to try and get this one out fast to be honest for a change. Nothing has really happened in the, the world since then. Obviously we are absolutely flying. We're doing bits, as the kids, I think, say. I don't know at this point. I'm too old for that now. But, yeah, we've got Nitro. We've got Thunder. We've got some plans. Oh, I say plans. We've got a six-man tag. We obviously have a new United States Heavyweight Champion, as Goldberg has ended the reign of Macho Man Randy Savage. Savage is in limbo now. Actually, I forgot to check. How much did he get knocked? Yeah, he lost about three or four points of overness in some places. Uh, however, look at that. We have really brought Goldberg up to main event levels now. Which is great. So, I think we just get into the episode, don't we? At this point, there's nothing really to sort of look at. One thing I did want to check is just, like, is there anybody who we could look at hiring? I feel like, I don't think the roster's getting stale, but, I mean, actually, have, so let's have a little look at some of the better young talent. So we'll do 25. Who have we got? Yeah, we've got quite a few guys here. Uh, is there anybody who stands out off the top of my head? I mean, there's Edge and Christian. There's Chris, there's Chris Daniels with lovely hair. Uh, Doug Wallion. Ooh, actually. I'm going to bring Doug Williams in. And I've got an idea, you probably know where I'm going with it, but I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Let's bring Doug Williams in. And... Is there anybody else? I mean, just incredible. He's only 24, but he's not very good, is the problem. At the end of the day, we do need them to be... Slightly good. I mean, you got like Quackenbush, but... He's not the wrestler he would become at this point. Um, Masata Tanaka would be really fun. Uh, Matt Bloom, Albert, Tensai, Giant Bernard, whatever you want to call him. It's this tempting, actually. I mean, he's a big man. Look at that picture as well. I mean, right, okay, so. First of all, 13 sex appeal for Necro. Come on, what are we doing here? But, oh, I'd love to bring Necro in. I, I, know, I don't know how many of my viewers watch indie wrestling or have ever like, sort of got into the, the history of the US Indies, especially in the 2000s. Necro Butcher from about 03, 03 probably. Like, so, I remember when he joined CZW. Obviously, it was in IW in Mid South, but when he joined CZW and started to really take off after one of the tournament of deaths, his run, I would say, at least from 03 to about 07, he is genuinely one of the best wrestlers in the world. His 2005 and 2006 is insane. Obviously, there's the Joe match, there's a low key match, there's the two death matches against Toby Klein, the tough, crazy bastards in CZW is an amazing tie. He's, he's He's so good. I love Necro. I, I said I was going to get right into the recording and it's been five minutes and I've already talked about Necro Butcher for about a minute and a half. Uh, Ricky Van Dennis is an interesting shout. Obviously, Mil Mortis or uh, Judas Macias or El Macias or whatever you know him as. A very young PJ Black. Dinsmore. Nah, he's not really got much to him. The Hassies? Is Charlie there? 
No, Charlie Haas isn't there for some reason, which is a shame. Uh, who else is there? I mean, there's the ICP, Slick Wagner Brown. I really like Steve Carino, but not right now. Super, cra super crazy. I suppose if you think about it, crazy was about to start in the ECW soon. But we do have sort of a lot of uh, Lucha guys who are not really doing much at the moment. I mean, you've got TJ Wilson, you've got Trent Acid just to start his career. I think we'll leave it for now. Yeah, so where's it? Charlie Haas isn't now. Anyway, we'll leave it for now. We'll bring in Doug Williams. And I'm thinking what we can do is, uh, what can what can we call these guys? So we've got Steve Regal, we've got Dave Taylor, we've got Finley, and we'll have Doug Williams. Regal can be the leader. These guys can just be members. You know what? I need to double check something. Two seconds. Uh, where is Fit Finley from? He's Northern Irish. Right. Okay, cool. We can call them very simply. I don't know if my screen just moved there. If it did, I apologize. The Brits. That's <laughs> the it's the most boring name possible, but we've got the Brits. Uh obviously and we're not gonna get into a Northern Ireland Republic of Ireland thing. Just for the sake of this, Northern Ireland is, you know, technically more towards Britain than it is the Republic at this stands. So the Brits I know actually know what a cardboard going with that whole argument. So let's just change their name. The lads. The lads. Because they're above tough and rug lads. And we're going to chuck Doug Williams in that group, and that will give us some tag teams that we can play with as well. Right. Seven and a half minutes in, we're going to book Nitro. I've, I need to shut up. The Barbarian is great. Ted DiBiase is great, and I actually forgot he was on my roster. And it's still these two guys out. Do we go back to Canada? Uh, we could go to the Brant, actually. No, we'll just stay in the US. Have we not been anywhere since March? No, we're all good. So some April's. Let's go to the Bradley Center. In the Great Lakes. And I think we start off with a promo. And that'll be Green Jean interviews the new US champ Goldberg. Goldberg says it's an honor and he'll defend the belt. That's kind of rubbish ending to that sentence, but simple, simple, simple. We will then have Hollywood Hogan arrive. We'll put Eric Bischoff in this segment as well. It'll just be the two of them. Hogan tells Eric that he wants a meeting in ring with Savage tonight. Okay, so then we'll go into our first match of the show. We'll do a tag match. We are going to have... Um, let's have the Steiners have a match on television, I think. And they can take on... Uh, the, let's do the Blue Bloods, I guess. And we'll give Scotty the win. In that one, and then since I've remembered it's on my roster, I suppose we'll do a promo here. So Steiners say they are back and they want their tag belts back. Very simple. Uh, let's take a risk on unscripted for all three of them. Up next. We shall do, uh, let's see what we'll do, the giant DDP 
Chris Benoit. They can talk about Raven and the Dudleys. I need to actually remember have a look at the Dudleys. Um, what do you call it? Overness. See what's happened. Okay, but uh, Giant, DDP, and Benoit say tonight they'll take care of the flop. Is that even what I've booked? Hang on. I'm an idiot. What am I doing? What am I doing? Benoit's not in this feud. Uh, not really. Okay. Giant and DDP. Alright, that was a bit of a, I'm sorry folks, that was a bit of a, a mess on my part. And we will do Diamond Dallas Page versus nah. Uh, DDP stats are rubbish, by the way, I just realised. Uh, how, how many times have I done this? Shockingly, never. Okay, cool. Oh, no, tiny, decisive. A nice, easy win for... For DDP, and then we'll just have the giant Diamond Dallas Page, Raven, Brother, Brother, Saturn, and then our mystery man here. Okay, so it'll be the flop come down with numbers advantage. Before Goldberg makes the save. A lot about mutual respect between Goldberg, DDP, and the Giant. So we'll do that, and that will help set up a match for Thunder of Goldberg, the Giant, and DDP versus the Flock. So I want to make a wee amendment to that. It will be the flop, Saturn, and Dudley's. I don't want Raven taking the fall. Up next, we will have Booker T take on if we just do the Stevie Ray match. Nah, we've not really built it. Booker T can take a Disco Inferno. Who I forgot was on my roster as well. So Booker, open script, decisive, even though he's a bad guy. And then we will do actually what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm I'm all over the shop today. Scratch that. That's not happening. Uh we will have Steve Rouge in Booker, Entertainment, Entertainment, Overness, Steve Ray. Challenges Booker to a fight on Thunder. Right. I'm all over the shop here. I've completely forgotten what I'm booking <laughs> at this point. So, I'm going to blow off the Stevie Ray thing at the pay-per-view. We are going to do... No, actually, you know what? We should probably do this. Now. So, Chris Benoit... I was going to probably even do main event, but I think this is too risky with these guys. So, let's do our main. Yeah, let's do this match now. We'll give it a bit of time, we'll give it 15 minutes. We are going to have Chris Benoit tap out Booker T. Deliberately. And we'll just move that angle up. As well, actually, we'll have it be uh, outside of interference. Booker T, Stevie Ray. There we go. Right, that works. So, Sting, Brett, and Roddy. 
Team WW says they have a few candidates for a fourth man. Hogan isn't one and they don't want him. So we're just going to lean into that whole thing from the previous segments and then we're going to do a 2v2. We're actually going to have two members of the Four Horsemen. Uh, they can take on... Yeah, let's do this. So obviously we've done the Ray Hoovey thing before. And we'll give Rick the win. But we're going to make it look good. There we go. Yeah, we won't do any post-match angle or anything. I don't think it's needed. And then... I'm not doing anything with Jericho in this episode. So I think next... will be... Do we do a Savage Goldberg rematch? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's do the Savage Goldberg rematch. The main event the show this time. We'll give it 10 minutes again. Uh, we'll give it a bit longer, actually. Well, all out. Script it for Goldberg's sake, and it will be decisive. But yeah, I thought that would be the case. 10 minutes it is. Let's just give that an extra two. And then angle. Right, because these idiots hate each other, need to do it in the stupid way, but... Kev, Conan, Booker, Randy Savage, Overness, Entertainment, 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 Hogan, Kicks, Savage, out, NWO, they beat down Macho, nobody comes to his rescue. Yeah, that's fine. Oh my god. They're, they're in the same angle. <laughs> they're in the same angle, folks. They're playing ball with each other. I apologize if you can hear music, by the way, uh, in the background, if you hear little like, tinny noises. I've got the Vakin live stream on. Uh, cool. Right, that... that that works. Now they're playing ball with each other. God knows why they couldn't do that before. Ay, ay, ay. Right. Uh, Faces of Fear in the pre-show can just destroy... Um, Lismar and Hector. There we go. We'll give, we'll give Barbie the win. Nice and simple. And then we'll have a singles match. And we will do... Who else have we not really been using? Jerry Flynn. There we go. Versus... Louis Piccoli. Who... Uh, I always forget Louis because he's on the roster because I think by this point in real life he may have died. Uh, for being too morbid. And then we will have a match between Stevie Ray. Nah, he's got warm momentum, so he'll be alright. Psychosis against La Parka. The park has actually got warm momentum, surprisingly, so you can have the win. Cool. All right, there we go. Let's this book let's let's play this episode and hope for the best. Here we go. So the faces of fear win that I mean a half decent pre-show match. Uh this was rubbish and this was okay. So a hundred perform a hundred rated segment to start the show as Goldberg comes out. Crowd love Goldberg, massive reaction. 
And he says it's an honour to be the US champion and he will defend the belt tonight against Macho Man and he'll you know give anybody who wants a shot a shot, but he'll beat everybody you're next, etc. Hogan struggling without a script, surprisingly, despite the fact that says he his performance was good, but he tells Eric, you know, go get Macho. We need to have a meeting tonight in the ring. We have a really good match actually. A 74 rated overall as the Steiners make their return to TV, beating the Bluebirds in 10 minutes with the Steinerizer. Both teams with good chemistry together. And the angle's a bit rubbish because the Steiners really stunk it out. But 63 overall. And they say they want their tag belts back and they'll take on the winner of Martin Raff and the NWO. They're not getting the next title shot, by the way, but that's what they're saying. The Giant and DDP then backstage say they'll take care of the flock tonight. They're, they're aligned, they're friends. They will do the business. And DDP beats Hammer in 6 minutes 40, 69 overall, which is actually better than I expected. And then the post-match angle gets a 73 as the flock come down with the numbers advantage before Goldberg, of all people, makes the save. Helping out his opponent at the pay-per-view, the Giant. Helping out DDP and obviously he's had his issues with the flock as well. Goldberg really looking good here. Superb for the script. The four people you expected to sort of struggle all struggled. The Dudleys especially. But a 73 overall, you can't complain. We then get a 74 for the six-man tag as Chris Benoit and Mortis. And Raph defeat the New World Order of Kevin Nash, Conan and Booker T in 1520 when Chris Benoit pins Booker T with the headbutt after Stevie Ray makes his return and he clocks Booker in the back of the head, slapjack probably, and manages to help get the win. And then post-match, as ever, he underperformed. But he gets 58 as Stevie Ray then says, Booker, we're brothers, but... I want you on Thunder, I'm going to beat you up, I'm going to show you some respect. We then get a 100, as Team WCW of Bret Hart, Sting and Roddy Piper said they have a few candidates for a fourth man, Hogan isn't one of them, despite what he did on last week's show. I forgot what show it was on, so last week's show. Um, and it's, yeah, pretty simple, 100 rated, can't complain. They have a really good match uh, with some potential bad news, which could be frustrating. So Lex Luger and Ric Flair defeat Ray and Hoovy when Ric Flair submits Hoovy to Guerrero with the figure four leg lock. But Lex Luger has sustained a whiplash neck strain. Now I'm hoping the word strain means he's going to be alright for the pay-per-view. And it was Hoovy's fault. For God's sake, Hoovy. You daft it. And then we get an 85 rated main event as Goldberg does manage to beat Savage for the second time in a week. And he retains the US heavyweight title. Savage, he tried everything. He can't believe it. Both guys almost equal in ring, by the way, as well. And then to end the show, we get a 92 overall segment as Hogan, Nash, Conan and Booker T, the main members of the NWO nowadays, come out to the ring and, you know, Hogan says, look, match, you've let us down time and time again. But, you know, we can let bygones be bygones. They, they give each other the two sweet and then Booker T gets the honours of taking out Savage. And then they put the boots to him and nobody comes to Savage's rescue because why would anybody come and help an NWO guy? And we get an 89 overall again, slightly lower than last week, but that's fine. We did very well. We had restricted growth in the US, apparently it must be Hawaii, I assume. But yeah, good show. Really good show, real happy with that. We've built some fun things for Thunder. We've continued the build to the pay-per-view and now we just need to find out what's going on with Lexi's injury. Fingers crossed he's able to go at the pay-per-view because if he doesn't, that throws a lot of my plans out the window. So, before we look at anything else, we need to check. 
Six days. We've managed to escape that one massively. That's thank God for that. We get Lex Luger back for Slambury. He barely misses any action. He'll miss one episode. So, Brett hates Hoovy. Hogan getting everybody to hate Brett. Ric Flair's turning everybody on Scott Steiner now. Okay. And we get a 6.63, so our ratings have gone massively up since we went to large size and since we managed to get better TV rights as well. So we got an 89 and Raw, based on the fact that it's down here. Yeah, 68. It was in Hawaii though, so that's probably why. They do... I mean, similar-ish viewers to what we managed to end up getting, so, you know, it's what it is. Decent main event, Triple H beating Jeff Jarrett in a ladder match in 1998 would be pretty good. Triple H hadn't fallen off the rails yet by that point. Lawler to Tanka, pretty fun. That's a really fun match as well. Yeah, good stuff. WWF Crisis, the kind of, oh. Oh. 76. Are, they've dropped to medium. Oh my god. The WWF's fallen to medium size. Wow. Does that mean I can like poach talent? No, because they're still on exclusive writings. Huh. Who's not on exclusive rights? I could bring Cornette in. I could bring the Rock and Roll Express. Sonny. Eh, nah. We've got our eyes on the big prize, of course, is still here. Next month, we will be able to make the offer to Shawn Michaels. Looking forward to it. And now that WWF's medium as well, we should be in a really strong position for that. But that's going to do it for this part of the episode. I'll be back in a moment for some thunder. Okay, so it's thunder time. However, first things first, of course, we need to check in on what ECW is doing. And yeah. Shane Douglas and Ultimate Warrior beating Sami Silk and Nails in the cage match. The ECW main event scene continuing to fly. Uh, NW in New Jersey had a show. And it's NW Florida we were isn't it? I need to remember who I've actually got as my child companies. It's, um, yeah, NWA Florida and Jersey All Pro. That's who it is. So, Thunder on the agenda tonight. We have that one match, and that's kind of it. So, Savage is out the NWO. Let's, let's amend that now. Okay. Now, do we turn Savage babyface? He's an amazing babyface. Uh, who's our like top guys? So he's a heel. Face, 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 heel, 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 face. Ah, uh, but actually, could probably be all right. I don't know. Maybe I just keep Savage off TV this week. Check in, still the same thing. Uh, we will go to the southwest to the Talking Stick Resort Arena, I guess. So, we're going to open the show with the NWO Hogan, Nash, Conan, and Booker T. NWO say they're glad to be rid of the Deadwood in Savage. 
we'll move on from here. Simple and easy. We then have Chris Jericho and Dan Severn. Menace for Dan. Entertainment. Dean Malenko off screen. Jericho. Uh, Jericho says tonight. Severn will destroy Dean to the point there will be no match at the pay-per-view. So we're going to do Dan Severn versus Dean Malenko to open the show. Which I'm positive should pull a really strong rating. They're very similar in pop as well. So I think we're going to give the win to Dean. I was thinking about doing disqualification. But we're going to give Dean the win. Yeah, Dean the win. And then we're not going to do like a post-match thing for that. So that's fine. Booker T. Gene O'Connell. Steve Ray. Off-screen. Entertainment. Entertainment. Booker is ready to put his brother behind him. And move on from this nonsense. And we're just going to do this match nice and early. Booker T versus Stevie Ray. I don't want to do this on pay-per-view because Stevie Ray stinks. You know what? Booker T is going to dominate. And it's going to be decisive as well. Booker T. Kevin Nash. Conan. Stevie Ray. Wrath, Morris, it's Benoit. So NWO take out Stevie Ray, put him through a nouns table, I guess. Morris, Wrath, Benoit make the save too late. There we go. Up next, we will have Raven. Brother, brother. Now we not rated. Raven says it's time for his brothers to rise up and prove their worth. So obviously, the Dudleys haven't had a hot start to the company. But he says to all of them, that you know you guys need to man up basically and win this match for me if you really want to prove yourselves uh spoiler alert once again they will not do it because i mean goldberg's on the other side and this is a star studied like team here uh we'll have goldberg get the win doesn't really matter who takes the fall there we go up next, Eddie Six and Gene. Eddie says he cannot wait to get his hands on Six. Is then jumped from behind mid interview. Six takes uh, and jump from behind. Six steals belt. That gets that one sorted, so that, that, that. Yeah, so nearly everything here is done. So, we'll do a four horsemen promo. Let's... Or four horsemen. Say Lex is fine. They will let Hennig and Rude destroy Hoovy and Ray as punishment. And we're going to do a wee rematch of that match from the pay-per-view. We've got plenty of time left on this show. So Ray and Hoovy versus Kurt Hennig and Rick Root. We'll give it 12. No injuring anybody this time, Hoovy, please. 
separate and decisive. And then we're going to have Sting, Brett, Roddy. If we can find Roddy. There he is. Entertainment. Car. Rick. Rick. Alex. Entertainment. Team WSW runs off the horseman to save Ray and Hoovy. And then our main event. What do we want to do for the main event? So who have I not used? Um I suppose we could do Yeah, I mean I'm gonna trust Savage here to get a match out of Conan. Yeah, and then we'll do a quick angle with Randy Hollywood Nash Conan and Booker Savage says he doesn't want any part of the NWO anymore and will be coming for Hogan and his title so, I've actually ended up fluking my w Savage! <laughs> Why you guys work together in the last episode? Why? Oh, I guess off screen then. For God's sake, macho. Oh, you're a pain in the arse. Savage. So, uh, on very short notice, I may have managed to flick myself into doing Savage versus Hogan at the pay-per-view. So, that's good. Right, let's, cut, let's do some call-ups. Uh, let's bring Rhino up. Let's give Rhino a match. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to have a really fun match here. Scott Norton versus Rhino. Hell yeah. Now, that's a match I'd... 19, remember that 1998, like 2000? Oh, yes. They'd kill each other. It'd be amazing. Uh, 2v2. World of Sport haven't been seen in a while. They can take a loss to Mortis and Wrath. Give Wrath the win. It's to be a match for the pre show. And then we'll do a singles main event for the pre show. We've not used Kidman in a while. Kidman versus Hector Garza. Yeah. Let's give Kidman a wee win. Let's give the flock some momentum. Because I'm not getting any on this show. Uh, decisive. Screw it. Yep. So, uh, we want to turn Savage face, I think, now. Road agent notes turn Randy Savage. Go, let's go. So, as expected, this is actually a really fun little match 54 overall, 59 overall for this tag match, and 47 for the cruiser main event. So, that's not too bad. But we open the show with an 83 overall segment with the NWO saying they're glad to be rid of the dead with the Savage. And they'll move on from here. Conan, Big K Dog, is going to beat Savage out of the company basically tonight in the main event. Jericho and Dan Severn, my favourite tag team, say, you know, tonight Dean 
nothing, there's going to be nothing left at the pay-per-view, so this Big Dan's going to destroy you. And yeah, I thought this would be good. 82 overall, Dean Malenko defeats Dan Severn with the Texas Cloverleaf in just under 12 minutes. Really good match. Both guys amazing in it as well. You know what? The inevitable Dan Severn turn on Chris Jericho. I think the match is going to be incredible. Booker T with oh, a really good promo by Booker T to the point where I actually want to double check what his overness is now. Because I think it's going to be really strong. Booker T says, you know, he's going to move on from this nonsense with Stevie Ray. Me and Gene, not happy with his answers, but that's fine. They get a 62 overall. That's probably as good as we can hope for with how crap Stevie Ray is. Booker does get the win with the missile dropkick. Stevie Ray off his game, stunk the joint out. And for his actions, he gets put through a table in a segment, of course, which he underperformed in. As always, but Stevie Ray is now effectively finished in WCW. We've ruled him out and we've advanced the other storylines as well. Another really good promo here is Raven speaks to the brothers and Saturn. I, I kind of want to just rename Saturn to Brother Saturn at this point, but yeah, I might do that. And he says, look, guys, you need to buckle up your ideas. You need to win tonight. They don't, but it's a really good match. 73 overall. Goldberg, Diamond Dallas Page and the Giant defeat the brothers of Brother Ray, Brother Devon and Saturn of the flock. And Goldberg pins Brother Ray with the jackhammer. He picks up the biggest guy, slams him down. He's the MVP of the match as well. Even Devon's getting better, so you know. All well that ends well. Another really good promo is Eddie says he can't wait to get his hands on six next Sunday for six jumps him from behind and then takes the cruiserweight title as well Eddie's furious Mean Gene's apoplectic you know losing his mind and then get a 98 four horsemen segment the four horsemen say Lex is fine after that idiot Hoovey took him out or injured him last week and Hennig and Rude are going to destroy these two, you know, this is where Ric Flair's going to jingo with these two little Mexicans, these masked idiots. And they do win, and a very good match actually, 75 overall, so another good match between these two teams, as Kurt Hennig pins Hoovy with the Hennig Plex, Hoovy the worst guy in the match by a distance, and really off his game. We should probably move Ray on from this tag team, but... I've not really got any plans for Ray currently, so at least this keeps him occupied. And we go into a 100 rated segment as Team WCW runs off the Horsemen to save Ray and Hoovy. And yeah, good stuff. I mean, Ray, potentially another option for the fourth man at the pay-per-view. And then yeah, the main event does okay. 76 overall, Savage beats Conan with the flying elbow drop. And I'm hoping... That Savage is going to get a really strong rating here. Oh. Oh no. What happened here? Ah. Whoop. Oh, boy, that's a absolute goddamn howler. Yeah, I need to start planning my face turns better, I think. That's a bad one. 69 overall. That might drop the show like five points. But Savage says, you know, he's no longer part of the NWO. He doesn't want to be part of the NWO. He hates the NWO. And you know what? Hogan got in his business. He's coming for Hogan. He's coming for the WCW World Heavyweight title. It does get an 86, so it is our lowest rated Thunder, I think, in quite a while, which is a shame because the show was actually really good up until that promo, but we should have started the face turn on Nitro. Yeah, that was my bad. My bad. At least it's still a good show, we've still gained popularity, we're still above all the thresholds that we need to be above. So, at the end of the day, it worked the, the turn was a disaster it was a disaster i'll hold my hands up it was a mess but at least it's done now we can bring savage back that's not an issue uh, if we have a little look actually 
Well, I've remembered. So, Savage. He's irritated by it, but it's fine. He'll get over it. But he's now a babyface again, so that's fine. Uh, while I'm here, actually. While I'm here. Booker T. What are we doing? Oh, yeah. He's going up. He's going up. That's good. Booker T is going up nicely. Benoit. Yeah, same sort of range. Devon and Brother Ray. Still unimportant to the fans. But they're getting there. They should be there very soon. But let's look at the news and other things. So lots of TV deals are happening, by the way. Now that uh, I added some more TV companies, so that's good. Brian Lawler has gained some weight. I really like Brian. I think Brian Lawler and WCW would be like, really good. Scott Taylor, has he been given a contract offer? He has. Fair play. I don't really want Scott Taylor. I mean, he's, he's all right. He's pretty good, but I've got no plans for Scott Taylor. Devon's left ECW. Uh, Ray had left recently. And um, we got 5.15, just 4.5 million viewers overall. Has that actually helped our size in Britain? Not yet. Japan, monstrous. India and Europe. They'll get better as time goes on. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, I'm going to look at a few popularity guys actually at the moment. Jericho's doing really well. Severn's doing really well. Dean Malenko we've got off nicely as well. DDP's hanging around that 80 range. Goldberg's obviously up towards the mid-80s. Eddie's in the 60s. We're 6. 50. Yeah, that's fine. He's not winning the belt anyway, so. Raven's in the mid-60s. Flair's in the nearly 90s at this point. Rick Rude's same area. Sting's still in the early 90s. Lex. I mean, this is, this is my favourite accomplishment so far. Is, I know I've said it before, but one of the key things I want you to do with this save was to try and go as realistic as possible. So, you know, I could have went out and signed Christopher Daniels and made him the Cruiserweight Champion at this time frame, or I could have, you could, you know, do all these things. You could de-push Hogan, for example, because obviously, yeah, the man in real life is a nightmare, but in 1998... There's no one bigger than Hogan. So, I mean, Austin's close, but Hogan's still Hogan. But I think Lex Luger, in 1997, obviously has that amazing match with Hogan. And the match is really good as well. This isn't like any, you know, pretending. I think the Hogan-Luger match on Nitro where Lex wins the belt is really, really good. It's a great performance by both guys. The rematch is not as good, but the title switch, the crowd reaction is incredible for Lex. And then he just kind of cools off. And then obviously he joins the Wolf Pack, and it's all a bit weird. But I think this job I've done with Lex Luger, I know I've said it before, I'm really happy with this because Lex in the ring isn't the best. He's actually going down. His, his progress is going up. So, you know, Luger's going to be great in Japan. Hardcore's going up. His tech's gone up. His aerial's going up. And his flashiness is going up. His brawling's going down. But, like, the basics went up by one. His selling's the same. He's getting more consistent. He's much safer. Stamina and athleticism are obviously going down, which is to be expected because he's well, a drinker, a drug user, a painkiller user, a bodybuilder, which... I mean, it's getting bigger than normal, but, you know, with Lex, I'm really happy with the job we've done there with him. He's been him, Eddie, Goldberg, Jericho. And, like, even Jericho, I mean, you could, you could play this game and you could just push Chris Jericho to the title match. But, like, I've, I've raised Jericho's points by 10, for the most part. We've given them the TV title, which I think is a good level for Jericho. 
gets him out of that cruiserweight sort of window. He's having good matches. He's having good promos. I'm happy with it. Dan Severn the same. Oh, Doug Williams joined, by the way. I forgot to mention. So we can quickly add him to the lads. Basically, these are just four rough, rugged British slash Irish men who will just kick your teeth in. But I'm real happy with how these look. I'm almost contemplating just kicking these two out, the NWO as well. And then we'll have Hall, who's obviously out forever. But Hogan, Nash, Booker, Buff, Conan, Six, Norton. It's a really strong stable, I think. But yeah, I don't think there's anything else to talk about. We're doing really good bits. And we've already gained back like 3 million. Or whatever, how much we've gained back. I mean, our broadcast revenue has flown up by a million and a half. And we've not even finished the month. Ticket sales will probably go up to a similar point. Sponsorship will should fly past that amount. Merchandise is doing great as well. It's taking forever to go up a level, but Sting, nearly a million in revenue. Brett, nearly a million. I mean, last month, both of those guys made a million. Look at the drop-off, by the way, when you get to Savage. And already, three weeks into this month, we're looking really good. Who's actually making the least? Poor Booker T. Oh, that's a shame. How's Booker T making less than Gene Okerlund? <laughs> Come on now. That's ridiculous. That's that's stupid. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in a couple of days' time. We'll be doing the go home shows of Nitro and Thunder before booking Slamboree. And of course, we can quickly add it now because I'm just going to do it. We are going to do Hollywood Hogan versus Randy Savage as our title match but it is not going to be our main event our main event is still going to be the eight man tag but thanks so much for watching see you in two days drop a like all that fun stuff and i'll see you then thank you and goodbye